for the Mile 3 handicap. And they're off. A mile and three furlongs for the Unibet Extra Place offers everyday Phillies handicap. And dropping in at the back of the field, Golden Dove, as they come up past the stands with the circuit to go. Compliant, now taken on by Ricona. And once again, a race this evening that's going to be run at a dawdling early tempo. Ricona has a lead by a length and a half. Compliant in second. In third, how hard can it be? In fourth, Lady Lulu. Then D Day Odette, Golden Dove, last of the six Phillies and Mares, as they spin the turn and they make the run now into the back straight. A mile to go at this point, Ricona has a lead of just over a length, compliant in second. A length away, how hard can it be, is in third. Three parts of a length, Lady Lulu on her outside in fourth, a length back to D Day Odette, and a further length back to Golden Dove at the back of the field of six as they go inside the final seven furlongs. Ricona, bidding to follow up the win here 18 days ago. The lead extends to a length and a half. Over Compliant, racing in second. The Grey, how hard can it be, is in third. On their outside, Lady Lulu, D-Day Odette, and still last is Golden Dove. And now they're racing inside the final five furlongs. About to lead the back straight behind them. Ricona will take them into that turn. Ricona, now by just a length and a half. Compliant in second, just over a length back to how hard can it be in third. Then Lady Lulu, the first one off the bit, just been niggled along now with a half, mile to go in fourth. D Day Odette, and last is Golden Dove as they begin to complete the turn back towards home, and Ricona still leads. So Ricona with less than three to race. Compliant now tries to make a move on her shoulder towards the inside. How hard can it be? We'll go towards the cutaway, and Dede Odette is going to be forced to go down towards that far side rail as well. Meanwhile, on the near side, Golden Dove tries to get into the mix, and now the back marker is Lady Lulu. A furlong and a half to go. Now they're sprinting, and Compliant heads that sprint back towards home. Racona, and on the near side is Golden Dove. On the inside, Dede Odette. Compliant and Danny Muscat still have the lead. Uh, now another 100 yards to go. It is compliant by three parts of a length. Compliant wins. A double for Danny Muscat. Compliant beat into second place on the near side, Golden Dove. And then over on the far side, Dede Odette. Double on the night for Danny Muscat. Compliant is a winner once again, having been turned over at short odds. She was well positioned. That is fast becoming the theme of the night, ultimately, because once again, up until the five furlong pole, They've gone a slow pace, and positioning was particularly key. They started to wind it up a little bit to some extent, but ultimately Compliant, who was stepping up to this kind of trip, she was always in the perfect position to strike under Danny, and when they started to sprint for home, she was very willing to, to give her finishing effort. At this point, Golden Dove has travelled into it really interestingly, and very different from some of the tactics that they've tried with Golden Dove in the past. Um, it ultimately being a little bit messy in behind as well. The compliance just had too much of a turn of foot when it really mattered. And it, she just gained a half a length, which soon turned into a length. And then ultimately, Golden Dove, who has stayed on nicely, but compliance had too much. Didi Adet has run a, a respectable race, given her position in behind as well, given she was positioned just second last for most of it. But Angus, once again, a race where the figures probably tell the whole story. Yeah, they, they never got under 13 seconds till round about halfway, and so perhaps just after halfway. And um, then it turned into a bit of a dash up the, the home straight from the four to the one. Those furlongs were, were 12, 1, 7, 11, 66, 11, 5. But the early fractions, as you can tell with your own eyes, you can tell how steady they're going, George, can't you? And I can tell you what they are, 16, 68, 14, 6, 13, 93, 13, 88. It's a, it's a crawl early on. Yeah, Racona went on. Yeah. because Paddy Valley didn't want to be caught four wide guns that bend and um, he's dawdled along in front at a very pedestrian gallop. You can see Dan Musket again didn't want to make the run in uncompliant. She's a little bit keen in his hands but she ends up getting into an okay rhythm just on mm. on the horse in front's quarters and is well positioned as the race develops and it was it's just not satisfactory to see races dawdle like this and, and turn into a sprint. You can see a lot of them are pulling for the heads and just struggling to get them to a relaxed rhythm. Yeah, with Ricona disappointing off an easy lead and not finding much under pressure, um, 
the winner was very well placed given the run of the race compliance, just tracking uh, the pace and um, nothing could close off. I thought D-Day Adette did well, second last at uh, this stage. She's run on strongly, it looks like she's still in form. Yeah, she is indeed. I thought they all finished on top of each other. I thought Golden Dove ran well again for Simon Earl and Tom Queeley and she will be seen to much better effect in a, in a, in a more evenly run race. Yeah, she made her ground up from the back, didn't she? And that was a, that was a good effort. She loomed up by going well, but Danny Musket was a, a nice, smooth ride from him, just tracking the pace. You'd have to say that Ricona was disappointing, given that she got the run of the race. The only thing is, I always find I agree she was disappointing, but she has a tendency to throw in a bad run, doesn't she? You know, she's she's done that in the, in the past. She's not consistent, and then wins, and and can throw in the odd poor run. So I just. It wasn't her day, and I think she's probably better suited by a race run at an even gallop, and she can just take her time a little bit more. I definitely mark up Golden Dove. She's had to make the ground up from the back. Probably used up a lot of petrol getting from last to on the heels of the winner compliant, and then couldn't go on thereafter. So that's a good effort from Golden Dove on the outside, and D-Day Adept down on the inside. Yeah, I think the winner was well positioned, and Dan was able to move up before the sprint started, wasn't it? We yeah. highlighted it as, as it was happening. Yeah. I said, Dan will just move up now before the sprint home starts. And um, he didn't dash clear by any means, but he was just on the front foot. And it made it, made it very difficult for a closer. Yeah. And I'm sure they'll be delighted with this filly. You know, she's particularly well bred and um, another win for her is important. It's hard to close down a horse who, you know, George, is in the, in the three furlong pole to the two pole goes 11.66 and then goes 11.5 in what effectively is a staying contest. It's, it's hard to close horses down that are going that quickly in front of you. It is indeed, and um, pace in the races is everything, Angus. I've, yeah. I've, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about it recently on we the have. weather. We've seen a lot of messy races, and um, working with some of the young apprentices, it's, it's everything to, to win your race, to be well positioned. But ultimately, being well positioned is all down to where you're, how the pace is unfolding. Exactly, yeah. Pace more important uh, than position. The two are, to a degree, related. There's the winner, a compliant. Well done to uh, Danny Musket. He completes a double after Lightship's success in the 7 o'clock contest. So good night for Danny. Going well at the moment, isn't he, George? He is. Um, Kevin Stott had a winner in Newcastle today, and um, I'm sure these two are going to be sort of hammer and tongs for the, mm. the all-weather title. It was a lot closer than it was a month or so ago. Dan's had a particularly good run. Um, he's got a strong team of new market trainers he rides for on a consistent basis. And it was interesting news, wasn't it, today, Angus, that um, Kevin Stott's taken the retainer with Alma Racing. Yeah, it looks like a good good move uh, for him. 32 winners this year now for, for Danny Musket. As you say, uh, Kevin Stott's uh, bagged himself a decent retainer there with Alma Racing, and uh, they'll ride plenty of winners for them. Compliant 5-2, to two, Golden Dove 11-1. to Didier Dett went off favourite. Time's really slow. We highlighted that by having a look at the individual figures. It's uh, just over nine seconds outside uh, standard. Here's the winning jockey. Double for Danny Musket on the night. Two good chances, and ultimately it's worked out really nicely. Let's deal with compliant first. Perfect position. Yeah, um, there was no obvious pace on paper when the Ollie Murphy horse came out. Um, I was hard-pressed not to make it. Um, just felt she was a bit better with a buffer zone just to settle off, and especially stepping up in trip, we didn't really want to be doing the donkey work. Um, and we, we dawdled the first half. It wasn't until we got down to the sixth pole that we started to roll on. Um, she was in a perfect position, and once we started striding on, she was, she was very comfortable in her rhythm and showed a bit of dash at the two and a half and put the race to bed there, I thought, and, um, yeah, stuck, stuck her neck out when the others came to her. Steady pace has kind of been a theme of this evening. It, it felt like it was with Lightship as well, but you, the way you travelled into it in the race had developed a little bit earlier than, say, this race had. It's been a piece of work, ultimately. Uh, she's come forward from her, from her run here where she won last time. Um, I was impressed with her that day, um, but she definitely took a step forward tonight. Um, yeah, we didn't go quick at all, but they stepped on the they, they stepped on it quite quickly and abruptly at the three pole. Um, and uh, she she did travel really well both both times, and that seems to be a key asset. She's a big filly with a nice nice long stride, and sort of it took it took a lot of them out there come for zone very quickly. Before we turned in, all the horses around me came off rather quite quickly, and she was just able to just cruise in, fill up a little bit, and then. Uh, but I was, she quickened tonight. It was last time she was a little bit working like, so hopefully she's improving. Felt like she learnt plenty from last time as well. Yeah, confidence-wise as well, probably done done the world of good, and hopefully they can have a bit of fun with her. 
Well done. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Alex.